This is the warm glow of the cathode of a 6V6 pentode that I have put into a very old school 1960s continuous wave Morse code transmitter. Tubes, valves, fermionic valves, vacuum tubes, bottles. So, hi folks, welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. The normal caveat applies with this video. I am by no means advocating you follow me. The voltages in this project are deadly and make sure you know what you're doing if you're gonna play with this stuff because it is very, very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Spoiler alert, I managed to get a QSO on the rig. It was with VK4TJ, John, in Queensland. So a thousand kilometers on two watts and he was having a lot of trouble with QRM and QRN at his location and he had the filters very tight and he said that uh, he could tell it was a, a bit of a vintage sound, but the, the, the rig actually sounded okay. Um, it was, it was a, a usable signal, and it stayed inside the very, very narrow passband that he had set up. So that was really great. And uh, I proceeded to send him an email about uh, the rig that I was using and everything else, and he was kind enough to answer. So thank you, John. You absolutely made my evening getting that rig to actually live, because I don't think a rig has actually lived until uh, you've actually had a QSO on it. Stick around to the end of this video and I will discuss some of the, uh, the plans that I have, the dastardly plans, to make this rig even more fun to play with. Oh, and by the way, that uh, QSO um, happened via my um, Realistics DX160 as well. So we were listening on the, the DX160 and transmitting on the uh, the 1960s Amico design single tube uh, transmitter. So lots of fun, uh, fantastic novice setup from the 60s. Well, now it's time to see how much voltage we get out of this uh, little car inverter. Uh, what we're doing is we're feeding it into a full wave bridge rectifier. And this is the uh, 450 volt 68 microfarad capacitor that uh, we have ripped out of this switch mode supply. Let's just see uh, how, much, uh, how much voltage we get out. Okay, well here's the dastardly plan. As you can see up here on the screen, we have a full wave bridge rectifier and this circuit is a voltage multiplier. Now ideally these two capacitors would be the same value. Unfortunately, I don't have two high voltage capacitors. I've got uh, different ones because we have different switch mode supplies. This one's uh, about 150 microfarads and the other one's, I think it's 60 something. Uh, so it's less than half. It's not ideal, but we should be able to, it'll affect ripple and impedance and all that, you know, technical stuff, but we should be able to voltage multiply with these two capacitors. They both are in excess of 400 volts. It'll be interesting to see how well this works or doesn't work. If the, if the actual tube will oscillate with just the peak value, it will give me the opportunity to to, get, to uh, have a higher plate voltage and probably a higher output. So we might have a, a low and high output option in the transmitter, and we like options in the transmitter. So we're going to uh, we're going to give it a crack and see uh, how much voltage we can get out with the uh, with the doubler. It's a school night, so I'm not keen on staying up too late. But uh, <laughs> it's, the obsession has uh, taken hold. Some bleeder resistors across there. And I think it's to 330k, so it's about 115k across both capacitors. Uh, we've got our full wave bridge rectifier in there. I haven't put in the switch to go to half power, and I'm not sure whether I will. I've got to see how much voltage I get out of this thing and whether it's going to be worth the effort. Uh, I don't know what the waveform looks like, and my uh, scope, which you can uh, see in the background here, will only take up to 300 volts. So. I'm not keen on plugging high voltages into this thing. I've already wrecked the uh, arbitrary wave generator on it, so we don't want to uh, push our luck. So we'll plug this in and we'll, we'll just have a look and see whether we've got uh, a higher voltage. I don't think it's going to be double. I've just got this feeling that there's going to be a lot of inefficiencies and whatnot. Damn, 498 volts. That's a little bit too high. So we've removed that link to make it a voltage doubler and we will leave it at uh, this. Well now it's time to strip out the uh, AOE monster because I want to get those uh, air variable 
capacitors that are uh, living inside here. Got two of them. I'm going to use one on the antenna. You're supposed to use a trimmer cap, uh, but uh, I don't have one of those. And I'm just thinking, hey, we'll use one on the uh, on the antenna and one on the. Well, we have started removing parts from the AOE monster. Don't worry, this will be resurrected. It's going to come back, but uh, these are for the transmitter. And uh, one of them is going to be for the plate, and the other one's going to be the one that's in the antenna. Now, normally this is just little patter uh, variable capacitor, but I don't have one of those, and I thought, hey, what the heck. And if I decide to make the uh, thing more frequency agile, it, this is going to have to be adjusted. The antenna one's going to have to be adjusted quite often, so I'm just figuring it'll be easier to have them in there anyway, and I've got them, so let's use them. Oh, and I did go uh, back to JCAR because I needed some thin mill screws, and you know, I thought I had 300 rolls of black electrical tape, but they've disappeared as they always do. Well, we hate marking stuff out, so it was a bit wonka tated but it still works, so I'm going to use this on the front of my transmitter as a template. I'm making some uh, good progress on this. We'll have this uh, sorted out so on the weekend I'll be able to uh, just concentrate on wiring it up and uh, hopefully we get it to oscillate. That's our on-off switch for the DC. And uh, we have a little bit of reaming to do but uh, you know, like I said, step drills make it very, very easy. Well, it's a school night, so I can't stay up too late, but uh, I've just done a dry run on everything. Nothing's uh, attached properly. I do need to clean up holes and whatnot. I just wanted to see how this all works. That's my receive transmit. These will be adjusting for transmission. That's my key jack. That's my DC on and off. The pit, the uh, tube will be obviously in that socket. And I'll just show you the back. And here we have the back of the rig. Uh, one of these will be antenna. One of these will run to the receiver. And that is the jack. Now we'll have a look inside. You can see the uh, approximate position of uh, various things. And here is the inside, our inverter, which we still need to attach. These are our air variables, transmitter switch, key jack. Now this, now this relay is what I'm going to use to key the cathode so that uh, we haven't got large voltages arriving at the key. I just don't like that idea. Uh, I don't know whether this is going to cope with uh, the switching voltages that are, that are happening. It's, it's probably not going to be more than 250 or so vol volts, and this is a 250 volt AC uh, relay. Whether it's going to handle it at DC, who knows? We will find out. I'll obviously need to put a protection diode across that uh, so that uh, when we open and close it, we don't wreck other things. But that is the uh, rig thus far. We are just grinding around the uh, the capacitors on the inside of the case. And that is just so that the capacitors will be earthed to the actual case. And I'm going to do that for the, uh, the BNCs as well. And that way we've got the actual case earthed. And of course, there's going to be an earth lug for the shack. And that's also going to be ground around so that uh, the case is earthed. Uh, for RF and for everything else, hopefully. A little bit of progress. This is a double pole, double throw relay. The plan is to use this to key the cathode so that we don't end up with really high voltages on the key, which is going to give me a bit of a tickle. We don't want that to happen. Uh, so we want this all to be as safe as possible. And what we've also done is put some side tone in here. Now that's very loud and very high pitch, but uh, I'm used to that because that's what I've got keying my uh, Hermes lights. So what we'll do is we shall um, use some very, very uh, crude-ish <laughs> volume control. So there you have it. King and side tone, all taken care of. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. For a simple transmitter, we certainly have a lot of wires. So what we're going to do here basically is my switch, which is over here, is switching the antenna to receive. And when that happens, on the other side of the switch, because this is a double pole, double throw, 
we have um, connection to Earth. So when we throw this over to transmit, we're switching our antenna to the transmit side and disconnecting the receive antenna. And we're also connecting the Earth that allows the relay to, uh, and this is the re and this is the relay here. This allows the relay to key the cathode and also key the improvised side tone generator. <laughs> so that is it. Um, wondering how it's all going to go and whether this inverter is going to have a problem with the uh, earthing that happens. Um, that could be a problem. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, so far, I think it's going all right. We are pretty much there. Put a terminal strip in to hold some of these components. Everything's wired in. Our uh, relay is stuck down. And that's all wired. The only bit that is not wired thus far, we have a uh, 6 volt 3 terminal regulator here that's going to provide the, uh, the heater current. And all we need to wire, wire up here is a few of the resistors that are attached to the crystal and the RF choke and whatnot. And we will have, hopefully, oh, fingers crossed, a working transmitter. That will be happening tomorrow. So we started with the Heart 25. Then we went over to this design, which is the KC5LDO6L6 CW transmitter. This has the advantage of keeping the plate current, the high voltages off the coils that are exposed and off the uh, air variable capacitors as well. Still doesn't work. So we've jumped over here onto this Amico AC1 transmitter. And it's a cold pit style oscillator. Uh, so we can change these values to affect feedback. We can play around with the, uh, the value of this to reduce the current in the crystal. We can also put a current limiting resistor, a lower value in the leg of the crystal as well. So it'll run on HD49 crystals and not blow them up. That's the plan. So will we get this thing to oscillate by basically modifying this part of the circuit? The rest of the circuits are very, very similar. But we're going to modify this part of the circuit and see if we can get an oscillation out of this thing. Well, of course, we know we got an oscillation out of this thing because at the beginning of the video, I told you that uh, I had a QSO on it. Now, to be fair to those other designs, there is a very good chance that uh, we were having problems because in the initial stages of playing around with this transmitter, I did see an arcing on, on the actual coil or the tank circuit and I probably should have rewound it at that point in time. So the coil was compromised. I was also using that massive coil that you see in part one for this video series uh, that was only 800 micro henrys and I needed a 2.5 milli henry choke. So between the making of that first video and this video, I made a video on how to wind a 2.5 milli henry choke using a very, very cheap uh, and uh, easily available toroid. So if you haven't watched that video, jump on my channel. I will put a link in the description below here to not only uh, Microwave One's channel, who's given me a lot of these ideas, but also uh, I will give you a link to that uh, 2.5 milli Henry choke winding video. It's done quite well. It's been it's had over a thousand views in a couple of days. So there's obviously a bit of interest in that that whole idea. So we changed that large but still low value choke to the correct value and a less cumbersome choke and I wound another one because I needed another one in the new design. Um, I've also uh, decided to make this rig uh, frequency agile as well so we will be adding a VFO to it, a, a digital VFO and getting it frequency agile because if you're doing QRP and you're not frequency agile these days people don't really tune around that much and if they don't see you on the waterfall and there's a good chance they won't see you on the waterfall if you're running QRP uh, you might not be heard at all. So if you can tell in people and um, and you've got a bit of frequency agility, you've, you've, you're increasing your chances of actually making a QSO. I am having heaps and heaps of fun playing with these valves. I cannot tell you just how excited I am at the end of each day to get home and have a play. I will, in the next video, um, show you if I've managed to get this thing operating uh, on a VFO. And I will, I will do a final tour 
through all the different things that I've done because I've done quite a few modifications to this rig. Um, I had to heat sink the uh, supply for the uh, heater because it was running at about half an amp and it was a one amp regulator and it needed to be heat synced so it was shutting down. I didn't manage to blow it up but it was shutting down because of the heat stress. So we've now uh, got that mounted on the case and lots of other good and fun stuff. So I will um, see you and hopefully in the next episode of uh, The Art of Engineering you will see my brand new rig with a VFO. Check out my baby! Isn't it a cutie? A cute little baby! See ya! 7-3!